everybody, it's Jet Central coming back with episode one of the Q&A series. Uh, all the questions are going to be down below in the uh, description box, timestamp, so if you guys don't want to watch the whole entire video, just kind of want to scroll through the questions, um, it's down below, so let's get started. First question, favorite college team? I don't really have a set favorite college team, like I'm not like a fan of like LSU or Florida, Alabama, you know, one of these powerhouse teams. I kind of, I love college football as a product as a whole. And I like to root for coaching staffs that I really like because I like to I, I just really enjoy program building, right? So I'd probably say my number one team right now, my favorite team right now is Iowa State, the Cyclones. And yeah, I know it's kind of like a random team and I have no personal ties to the team at all. But I love Iowa State, what they're doing, um, what they're doing offensively, especially with the running back position the offensive line play. Matt Campbell as a whole, he's my favorite coach in college football. I also like to root for, you know, um, FAU, have family ties and stuff like that. Plus Lane Kiffin's cool. So um, FAU, Iowa State. Double-barreled question. If they keep Gase, is there any way he can turn it around? On the flip side, if he goes, who are your top two picks to take over and why? Well, it actually came out today that, you know, everybody has heard it already that Gase is going to be staying for it this season and next season. Um, I'm hoping Gase can turn it around. Do I think he will? No. That's just me, you know, getting down to brass tacks, just being honest, being blunt. I don't think he'll turn it around. I think we'll scrap together a couple wins this season. I, th I honestly think we'll end the season 4-12, and somewhere in that range, and be picking 3rd, 4th, 5th, so somewhere in that top 5. Um... If he were to be fired, my top two choices to replace him, number one, Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator from the Indianapolis Colts. He's a guy who I just kind of fell in love with over the past um, two seasons, um, you know, obviously under the Frank Reich coaching tree here. But he just what he's done on the defense side of the football with that roster, with that defense, is remarkable. His ability to uh, develop defensive players is, um, I think it's uncanny, and no nobody is talking about him as a potential head coach. I mean, really, I would have given him an interview this past year. Um, I kind of wanted to see what he would do in year two as a defensive coordinator. Um, but Matt Eberflus is definitely my number one guy. And then probably coach number two. Um, honestly, at this point, I, I would be I would be looking at McCarthy. I mean, this Gase experiment to me is not working out. I would look at Mike McCarthy, a guy who is high up on a lot of, lot of, lot of Jets fans' lists. This offseason, we obviously made the move with Gase instead of McCarthy. And the crazy thing is, is um, he's actually available. So, like, that's a realistic possibility. Why do you think Darnold is a franchise quarterback? What makes him good enough to be one? Why do you think he's struggling and what can be done to help him? Um, I, I think Darnold has the tools to become a franchise quarterback. I don't think he is one right now. Like, today, I don't think he can t lead a team to the playoffs. Um, just kind of what I've seen from him so far, this is a guy who's going to be turning the ball over at an alarming rate. I think he needs to kind of cut down on the turnovers. Um, mechanically speaking, I think a lot of – it's tough. It's tough because a lot of the interceptions, it, it, it kind of comes in two different ways. He has the interceptions where it's just a dumb decision, where he's trying to play hero ball. He might – you know, know that this Jets team, this Jets offense doesn't have a lot of talent. So, you know, this was um, the problem with Andrew Luck in Indianapolis. He'd always throw a bunch of picks, 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 picks every week uh, or every year rather. But it was because the Colts were picking number one. They were the worst team in football. So Andrew Luck comes in as the superstar quarterback. And by the way, Andrew Luck was a much higher prospect in my eyes than Darnold was. So having that kind of understood... Andrew Luck kind of played the same way. Jameis Winston plays the same way. Like, they try to fit the ball into tight windows. Um, they know that the team isn't really that talented. They might not be thinking that on a conscious level, but on a subconscious level, they know that I was the number, th number three pick in the draft. I'm the savior. I'm the franchise quarterback. Everybody's wearing my jersey. I I'm the face of the team. I got to make plays. I got to score points. Um, how can we do that when I'm just checking down, checking down, checking down? So I think that's one area where Darnold struggles or um, where the interceptions lie, where he's just playing hero ball and trying to fit balls into tight windows, and it's basically stupid decisions. And then the other side of the coin is, mechanically speaking, I mean, how many passes – have you seen get picked off from Donald where his feet are literally parallel or are like shoulder width apart and he's like throwing flat footed or he's in the middle of the air jumping up and like throwing up over the offensive line. I mean, you, you got to step in, 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 into your throws. I mean, you have to understand um, 
that mechanics do play a big, big, big part. I mean, look at Drew Brees. This guy, I mean, he can hit like a fly in the air, 25 yards downfield, 10 out of 10 times. I mean, this guy is so accurate because of mechanics. He's so mechanically sound. So I think those are kind of the reasons why he's struggling. That plus he's young. So if I'm the New York Jets... I'm really ch- building the offensive system around him. I'm l- I'm ripping passes down the middle of the field, intermediate passes, and uh, having a lot of uh, crossing routes. I don't think Donald's a guy to push the ball downfield consecutively. I don't think he's a big arm, big has a, a big enough arm to do that, like a Josh Allen, like a Cam Newton, like a Joe Flacco, for example, uh, even a Ben Roethlisberger uh, back in his prime. But um, I, I would just kind of work the middle of the field, work in the intermediate, set up a lot of play action. So that's kind of my thoughts on Darnold. Uh, hey, JC, do you like a team to be known for a fearsome defense, like an example like Ray Lewis-led, uh, or a high-powered offense, like a Peyton Manning, Marvin Marvin Harrison-led uh, Colts team? I like... Uh, well, I guess as a fan of football, I prefer a defensive-minded football team because I feel like in this day and age in offense, uh, or in football rather, offense is pretty easy. The quarterbacks are way protected. The wide receivers get, you know, you can throw a flag on literally every single play. Um, hands to the face. I mean, there's so many different penalties. Um, there's so much going in favor of the offense. I really don't feel like it's that hard to run an NFL offense in this day and age. Everything is up-tempo. You have a lot of spread stuff coming in from the college level that's being implemented. Look at the Chiefs. Look at the Eagles. Look at the Cardinals. Um but I feel like defense, you really, really, really need to identify what the goal is on defense. Are we going to be a smothering style of defense? Are we going to be a bend but don't break style of defense? Are we going to be a zone, man, what are we doing, 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, 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 five, whatever the case is, what is what is our, our identity on, on the defense side of the football, and how do we... Uh, impose how do we strike fear into opposing offenses because the last thing you want is to go up a team go up against a team like the Chiefs and then basically go into the game having a ton of confidence that they could just move the ball on you whenever they feel like it I mean the Chiefs great offense look at their defense they're they have four losses on the season so I prefer a solid solid defense I definitely would prefer a 2000 Ravens team over you know the early 2000s Colts team Uh, but that's just my opinion I, you know, the Seattle Seahawks um, defenses back in the day, you know, a couple years ago when Russell Wilson was still on his rookie deal. I mean, those defenses were great. Those San Francisco 49ers defenses, amazing. So I prefer defense. Who would you cut in the offseason? Who should the Jets resign? And which free agents would you like to acquire? Three prong question Who would you like to cut in the offseason? Truman and Johnson, definitely. Um, way overpaid. Definitely not worth it for sure. Um, he's the number one guy I would cut, I guess. Um, who should the Jets resign? Definitely Robbie Anderson. I feel like we should resign him and we will resign him because if we didn't have, if he wasn't in the plans in the long term future, there would we should have just traded him. Even if we would have gotten a fourth round pick, it's something. We don't want to have a situation like the Giants did last season where they're like, eh, we'll keep Landon Collins because we don't like any of the offers and he's just going to walk at the end of the season and we'll get nothing. So Robbie Anderson we should resign. And then which free agents would you like to acquire? Right now, if I'm the New York Jets, I'm looking at the situation like we're a bottom three team in the league. I'm not necessarily going big game hunting. I'm focusing on the draft. But the number one guy I want right now, I would probably say it's Brandon Scherf of the Washington Redskins. Guard, former Iowa Hawkeye. Um, What top offensive linemen are out there uh, in this draft? Or is A.J. Green an option? Uh, Assuming you're talking about free agency. I would probably say uh, Andrew Thomas from Georgia is like the top guy. But I personally like Trey Adams a lot from Washington. I feel like he should be getting a little bit more love. And is A.J. Green an option? I mean, money does talk and New York City does talk. Um And having A.J. Green on the outside would be tremendous, a huge boost for this Jets team. But I have a feeling A.J. Green, I think he is loyal to Cincinnati. I think coming off the injury, dealing with injuries kind of throughout his career, I think he'd be hesitant to come to a Jets team that screwed up the MRI process with Kelechi Assembly and they burned a bridge there. So it's not the best look. It's not the best look. 
I think the way the Jets went about handling the Jamal Adams situation is not the best look, and I don't feel as though the Jets as a team, uh, it, it's a favorable landing destination for free agents. What do you want to do with our first round pick? Like maybe a trade scenario on a guy that you'd want the Jets um, to pick with our pick. So I guess the question is, you know, what what do I want to do? That all depends on where we fall. You know, if we have the 13th pick, I'd probably say trade back, you know, because we need dudes. We need ballers on this team. We need to replenish this roster. We have way too many holes. We have way – we're so we're too thin. We're way too top-heavy. The Jets, I'm picking – for need, I'm looking at best players available. I mean, if we pick top three, I'm looking at Chase Young, obviously. Um, Chase Young, for sure. I would I would look at Jerry Judy, but that it kind of goes against my grain because I think you, you could get wide receivers anywhere. I mean, we talked about it on this channel. Allen Robinson was going to be great. Jarvis Landry was going to be great. Stephon Diggs was going to be great. I mean, time after time after time, um, we've said on this channel, we've called wide receivers being excellent in the league and it happens so i think that we can get wide and look i mean quincy Numa, i think he was a sixth round uh, f uh fourth round pick robbie anderson undrafted free agent um you can find guys late jerry judy reminds me a lot of a early sammy Watkins. so i would take a look at him because we desperately desperately need help on the outside i would look at judy i would look at a cd lamb but i think the number one priority is fixing the offensive line even though it's not sexy even though it's a tough pill to swallow i think andrew thomas at spot number three is the most realistic if we all right next question if we have a top three pick do you want to trade back and get more picks or take a player like chase young I would say if I'm running the team, I'm staying put unless you get a massive haul or you're sitting there at spot number two or something like that, spot number one, and a team wants to come up for a Tua, a, a team wants to come up for a Justin Herbert. Um, I think it'd be a mistake to pick Joe Burrow over those two guys um, for sure. But it's beside the point. The point is if we get a massive, massive haul, you know, I'm talking about you know, a Redskins move coming up for RG3, um, a Rams move coming up for Jared Goff. If we get one of those moves, I would consider it. But if I'm the Jets, I think I would I would sit there and I would take the best available player because we need dudes. If Chase Young's there, we got to take him. Imagine Quinn and Williams and Chase Young in the same defensive line. Pretty scary stuff. Uh, how did you become a Jet fan? Well, I became a Jet fan because growing up in Florida, well, there's it's really like a two-pronged answer here. Um, I grew up in Florida and I never really wanted to root for the hometown team. And all my friends growing up were Dolphins fans. Everybody I went to school with were Dolphins fans. Every time I would go outside, go out to eat, do whatever I wanted to do, there were always Dolphins fans any everywhere. And I just I just didn't like the Dolphins. I don't know why I just didn't like them. I don't know if it was, you know, their uniforms everybody liking them i just wanted to go against the against the grain right i did not want to be a dolphins fan um and it just so happened that my my parents were from the northeast my dad grew up a jet fan and it was kind of instilled at a young age that the jets were the good guys and you know interestingly enough the jets and the miami dolphins um were big time rivals or are big time rivals so it was like the perfect team because nobody is a jet fan down here i'm like you know what i'm gonna pick the jets i want to kind of be like the outlier and not just go with the flow and go with the team that everybody's obsessed with and loves um so i went with the jets and that was kind of that uh thoughts on the bills i think the jets should hire their coordinators i'm actually obsessed with the buffalo bills team how it's constructed they have a fantastic defense they have a y nice young quarterback in josh allen who people keep on making fun of you know people keep on saying he's inaccurate this that this that um Bottom line is the Buffalo Bills are winning games. He is the leader. He is making plays. He's picking up first downs. If you actually watch the Buffalo Bills games, you will see that wide receivers and tight ends constantly drop passes for the Bills uh, or drop passes for their quarterback. He picks up first down. He He's cr he's so good at extending plays and running with the football that might cut his career short in the long term. But as of right now, it's working for Buffalo. Does he have room to improve? Yes, obviously. But his, you know, you're mixing his size his personality with his arm strength um, with his overall understanding of the NFL game coming from a pro style uh, offense and a Craig bowl at Wyoming. There's a lot to like with this Bills team. They're still, I feel like they're still kind of far away from being a Super Bowl contender. 
they have an easy schedule this season. Um, I would, I really, really, really would have wanted, and obviously I'm a Jet fan here, so I'm happy it didn't kind of play out like this. But if I was a Bills fan, I would have traded for Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I, I think he would have been a fantastic fit for that offense uh, moving forward. AJ Green's a guy that you can look at as well going into next season. But all in all, I like Buffalo. Tremaine, Tremaine Edmonds is one of my favorite players in the league. Linebacker. Uh, who are your favorite Jets ever? I'd probably say my favorite Jets ever. Darrell Revis, Lavernius Coles, Santana Moss is up there. Um, I really liked LaDainian Tomlinson uh, when he was a Jet for a little bit. Um, Braylon Edwards. all three. Bart Scott, too. <coughs> all those guys are great. I mean, how many great, cool New York Jet guys were there? Jim Leonard, Eric Smith, all these different guys. Awesome stuff. Should we draft an O-lineman or a cornerback? Um, I would say O-line for sure at the top of the draft. I do not like picking cornerbacks in the first round. That's just me. I feel like you can find them late. I mean, there's so many good NFL cornerbacks, starting NFL quarterback cornerbacks that are uh, that were late mid to late to undrafted guys. You know, you don't have to pick a. T- it's not like it's not like a quarterback where it's like a dime a does or um, where it's like a diamond in the rough kind of thing. You can find starting NFL cornerbacks in the fourth round, in the sixth round, in the undrafted free agent market. Yes, of course, there are good cornerbacks in the first round, guys like Stephon Gilmore and Jalen Ramsey. But at the end of the day. You know, um, Xavier Rhodes is another first-round corner. Um, Marshawn Lattimore is another good first-round corner. But I feel like at the end of the day, you could get cornerbacks anywhere. Left tackle is more of an important position to this Jets team than corner. Um, I you got to go left tackle, in my opinion. You got to go left tackle. If that's not there, you have to address the right tackle position because we got to figure out what's going on with this O line. <laughs> is this the worst Jets season you have ever witnessed? Probably. This is definitely the season where I've, I've felt the least amount of excitement before games. It sucks to say it, but I'm being 100% honest with you. Um, I was always amped for the Rex Ryan era. I was always amped for the Todd Bowles era. Except in that last season, you know, like the last eight weeks of the season, I wasn't as pumped. Um, and yes, of course, you know, Herman Edwards and... Herman Edwards, I was, I was a young kid. Mangini, I was... I always liked how Mangini built his teams. Um, He really had an eye for talent. Um, But as far as... As far as just the overall worst season, I'd probably give it to this season, 2019. Top offensive lineman in free agency this season. I Again, I I think Brandon Scherf should be the number one priority for the Jets moving forward. We, We... Assembly didn't work out. Alex Lewis doesn't look to be like a long-term answer. Brian Winters is hurt. We got to figure out what's going on with guard. The best offensive linemen in this upcoming draft are tackles. Let's get a guard in the building. Brandon Scherf, former uh, top five pick. I hate, I hate having to think ahead to the NFL draft already, but hypothetically speaking, if we get the number one pick in this year's draft, who do we pick? Personally, I would trade down uh, to get depth at the O-line later. With a lot of genera- uh, generational players like Chase Young, Andrew Thomas, Judy sitting there, um, it would be hard to pass on all those guys. Yeah, I mean, kind of going back to the same thing uh, I said before. If there's a top, top guy, a top-level guy, a dude, a baller, just a beast sitting there, and we have a top three pick and we have a chance to land him, we got to snag him. We can't keep doing this. Look, the Jets are not a good football team. Why aren't we a good football team? Because look at just look at our drafts. Free agency aside, coaching hire aside, look at our drafts. Darren Lee, first round pick, not on the team. Leonard Williams, not on the team. Hackenberg, not on the team. Geno Smith, Devin Smith, Chase Amaro, D. Milliner, Sheldon Richardson, Muhammad Wilkerson. It's player after high pick, after high pick, after high pick, after high pick. Not on the team, not on the team, not on the team. We got to start nailing the drafts. Look at the Saints, look at the Patriots, look at the Ravens, look at the Steelers. I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers literally have players that you've never even heard of just stepping in and they're just complete beasts. We can't even pick players in the first round correctly. We need to stop overthinking everything and we just need to trust our eyes. Stop trying to do too much. Like we said on this channel. Like we said on this channel, you and I both agreed. Jalen Smith was available. Miles Jack was available. But we took Darren Lee, that undersized linebacker trying to do too much. You know, it's just one thing after another. We got to start nailing the draft. If there's a beast on the board in the top five, we got to pick him. That's my opinion, though. 
I know the Jets. Uh, I know the Jets are second in hits to the quarterback, but Darnold has to learn when a play is over. How much time do you uh, to give him to keep uh, or to to figure it out? And um, is he worth keeping long term? Love the channel. Thanks a lot, man. Um, well, the fact of the matter is, you know, you you pick a guy third overall. There's got to be some conviction there. You can't just pick a guy at, at spot number three and just hope that he turns into a stud. You have to keep Donald around for the rest of the season, obviously, and probably all of next season. At the end of next season, we'll probably have a good understanding of who Darnold is as a quarterback. Um, if he's not the answer, it's fine because there's going to be tons of guys in that upcoming class, the 2000, I believe, 21 draft with Trevor Lawrence um, and Dorian Thompson Robinson, a guy who nobody's talking about right now. I'm bringing, uh, I'm trying to trying to get him up. Um, Try to trying to start his bandwagon. He's a sophomore right now. Uh, he's over at UCLA. Reminds me of a tall Kyler Murray, kind of where the NFL is going. So Dorian DTR, uh, Elite Eleven guy, um, was the backup at uh, where was it? He was the backup to uh, Tate Martell at um, Bishop Gorman back in high school, and he was like a four-star quarterback. Really good guy. Um, but bottom line, um, how much time do you give him to figure it out? I would give him until the end of next season because, again, he's not on a big contract. It's not like we're paying a Jared Goff, a Matt Ryan, a Matt Stafford, anything crazy like that. He's still on a you know his rookie deal, which is affordable, and he's still young. I mean, he's, the guy's only 22 years old. So I'd probably give him until the end of next season to make a decision if I want to commit to him long term or – you know, start to look, um, you know, to some, you know, for for another option. Because think about it like this, you know, if we finish top or bottom three this year, and you know, next season we're bottom three again, questions are going to start to arise. He has to start getting better at some point, and he's been regressing under Adam Gase. But I, I'm not giving up on him. Did you ever play any sports competitively? Uh, if so, did you have any pre or post game rituals or habits? Um, you know, or, or do you do anything uh, that like brings uh, brings good luck to the Jets or anything like that? Um, I play football and I always eat the same thing for breakfast on game day. Much love from Slovenia. Um, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that question. It's definitely a uh, definitely a curveball, I, and I enjoy questions like that. Um, I did, I did, I played a lot of basketball. Uh, sucked at it. Played football. Uh, didn't play baseball until like when I was older because I played when I was younger. Got hit in the face a couple times and hated it. Thought it was boring. Soccer was always cool too, but def soccer was definitely the hardest sport because of like the endurance and stuff. I always felt like soccer was the hardest. Um, but gym class was always my favorite. You know, I always loved um, competitive things, whether it was like dodgeball or whatever it is. Um, I always like le uh, love competing and stuff. But as far as pre and post game rituals, yeah, not eating. I could not eat before a game, whether it was within any sport. Um, I'd have to play on an empty stomach. Um, Whenever I would have food, I would just feel slow and sluggish. Um, but yeah, I would just I would skip my first meal, push that first meal later on into the into the day, four to six hours after waking. Um, that just I just felt uh, a lot more mental clarity, a lot more focus um, throughout the game, and I didn't really have that sluggish feeling. You know, I, I would see all these kids like slamming down pasta before a game. I'm I'm looking at it like I would just be puking all over the field throwing up all over the court if i was eating pasta before a game and i know it's like the carbs for energy and stuff like that but trust me you'll have a ton of energy if you just play on an empty stomach but that's just me though uh next up how do you like your steak cooked i actually don't eat steak never really enjoyed it i don't really eat meat at all or i don't eat meat at all but when i did you see meat i liked it well done how has cliff kingsbury been doing do you think he would have been a good fit for the jets head coach um Cliff's been doing well. I mean, you have to tip your cap to him. I mean, he's coming in as a rookie head coach with a rookie quarterback with a brand new NFL system, and he has three wins on the season. I mean, he has, say what you want about Cliff Kingsbury. He has more wins than Adam Gase. He has more wins than Pat Shermer. He has more wins than Brian Flores. He has more wins than, you know, the Brian Callahan, Jay Gruden team, whatever. He's coming in and doing his thing. Um, it's going to take some time. Kyler's still young. Cliff is still young. The defense is learning under Vance Joseph. I think if he was the coach of the New York Jets, it's actually interesting because he moved on from Josh Rosen um, pretty quickly. I wonder if the Jets were to, you know, if he were to uh, sign with the Jets, if he would have just passed on Darnold 
and just taking Kyler Murray because that I feel like would have been would have been interesting. Would he have stuck with Sam or would he have drafted Kyler? So it's always kind of the cool thing I like to think about. But he's so far, wins and losses speaking, he's been the better head coach than Adam Gaze. I read an article yesterday about how Joe Douglas talked to Ryan, uh, talked Ryan Khalil out of uh, retirement, the center of the Jets, obviously. And how it rubbed some of the other offensive linemen the wrong way because of how Harrison worked his ass off during the offseason only to find out that the position wasn't his. I just wanted to get your take on it. I think that Joe has his favorites and um, might not be within the best interest of the franchise. But I don't know. It's just me. Uh, it's a great point. It's a great question. Uh, I think... I think Harrison deserved a st- an opportunity to start. I don't think that Khalil should have just came in and just immediately been the center. Um, even though he had a really solid season and even though he is considered uh, an, an overall upgrade from Harrison. But I think at the end of the day, football is a competitive sport. You can't be uh, heartbroken or in your feelings about losing a... Um, a a, a starting role the only thing you can do is continue to row the boat continue to control what you can control you don't know what's going to happen you don't know like in jonathan harrison's case you don't know if ryan khalil is going to get hurt you don't know if he's going to pick up the phone and say you know what joe douglas i actually preferred retirement i'm out of here you don't know if he's going to suck like he's like he's done so jonathan harrison i would advise just to keep on working your ass off keep on hustling keep on doing your thing eventually the process will love you back in the wise words of matt campbell last question scotty tyb what would be your dream offense quarterback wide receiver one wide receiver two wide receiver three running back tight end quarterback i'd probably have to go with andy dalton no i'm just kidding quarterback i'd probably go it's tough. I'd probably go Russell Wilson. Um, I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in today's game right now, but I feel like Russell Wilson's ability to inspire and lead men is a lot better than Aaron Rodgers. I feel like if Rodgers was the quarterback of a absolutely stacked team, um, it might not be the best. Uh, it, it might not be a strong suit. I think Aaron Rodgers prefers to be the lead dog, the alpha, the the you know, the, the guy leading the team as opposed to, you know, maybe a guy who is just being the point guard. So I would take Russell Wilson as quarterback, plus Russell Wilson gives you the ability to run downfield. Both quarterbacks are excellent in escaping the pocket, extending the play, but when it's all said and done, Russell Wilson is the younger athlete, he's the bigger athlete, he's the more durable athlete, um, and he's the more more of an athlete. Uh, wide receiver one, I'd give it to Julio Jones. I mean, this is a guy who can box out. He has speed. He can beat you over the top. Uh, he can beat you underneath. Um, very, very, very difficult to defend, especially on one-on-one matchups. So Julio Jones, my number one wide receiver. Wide receiver number two. This one's actually really, really tough. Um, let me think about it. I'll, I'll move on to wide receiver number three. Wide receiver number three or my slot guy, definitely a Tyree kill. Definitely a guy that you could send on reverses. You could send him downfield deep. You could throw posts to him down the middle of the field. I mean, Tyree Kill's ability to get open, to get downfield with Russell Wilson's playmaking abilities. Are you kidding me? That's like a touchdown every drive. Um, so Tyree Kill, definitely wide receiver number three. Um, because I just like his versatility. I like how you could, you know, line him up in the wildcat. You could line him up at running back. You can literally hand him a halfback draw and let him go. Let him just go to work. Plus, he also gives you the versatility and creativity on special teams. Running back, I would pro- mm. There's a lot of good ones out there. But if we're talking dream teams right now, I would probably give it to Zeke Elliott because, yes, I know a lot of people are obsessed with Saquon Barkley, but when you look at it, Zeke is just more of the complete back. And if we have all these weapons on offense, chances are, and we have Russell Wilson at quarterback, chances are we're going to be throwing the football. Zeke Elliott can get you that third and one. He can get you that fourth and inches. He can also pick up blocks really, really well, second to none. So I like Zeke as a bell cow guy, kind of on the goal line situations. Um, also helps out. He's the best blocking running back in the league. Um, we're going to score enough points with Julio, with Tyreek, and all these different guys. Let's get a bell cow running back in there that we could just force feed the football in short yardage uh, situations. And really, um, you know, even in bad weather, you know, if it's snowing, if it's raining, and the quarterback can't go, if the wide receivers are dropping passes, um, 
you can give the ball to Zeke and rely on him. Uh, it's not going to be like a Christian McCaffrey where a defense can load the box and you know try to neutralize him. Uh, tight end, I would probably say right now it's George Kittle. I mean, this is a guy who uh, is as tough as they come, and that's my number one trait when it comes to tight ends. I like having tough tight ends, guys that aren't afraid to go over the middle, guys that aren't afraid to make a catch, guys that aren't afraid to jump into double coverage and to make a grab. So it'd be George Kittle. Going back to wide receiver number two, really tough call. See, I want to say like DeAndre Hopkins, right? A guy who I could trust, a guy who I can throw the football to and, and him just, you know, come down with it. Um, but the fact of the matter is that DeAndre Hopkins actually has not been that solid as far as catching the football goes this season. It's just a fact. He's dropped a lot of passes. So if I were to give wide receiver number two out, I'd probably go with a Michael Thomas. Because I got Julio on the outside. He can beat you over top. He you know, presents all of his problems. Michael Thomas is a guy who on, on a third and six, you can kind of put Tyreek in motion. You kind of have to be aware of what Zeke's doing. You know, Julio, you, you, chances are they're probably double covering him. Michael Thomas is a guy that you could just kind of throw that slant to, throw that core cool route, and uh, he's, he's going to come down with it. The guy has great hands. The guy has great size. Um, really, really, really solid wide receiver. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your questions for episode two down below in the comment section. Uh, it should drop at some point next week. I hope you liked it. 31-minute video. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Go Jets.